Hello and welcome to race one of the Group One Cup. With me, Roger Blackwater, and sitting beside me, as always, is the legend, Clive Smith. Say hello, Clive. Hello, Roger. Hello, viewers. Really excited to be here once again, commentating by your side. Really excited for this race. What about you, Roger? I couldn't agree with you more, Clive. I'm really looking forward to this one. This is the first race, and we are going to stay with Jeff James throughout the whole duration of his season. And we are underway, starting in 12th position. How far can he climb? The Japanese player, Morai, in front of him then. Clive, tell us a little bit about the card that he's using. Well, okay, Roger. Uh, he's in the Audi R18, which is an absolutely magnificent piece of machinery, producing around 527 brake horsepower when it is all alive and kicking, unlike my pet cat, Snowflake, who actually got run over by the milkman this morning. Oh. God! Bloody hell, Clive! What have we talked about you bringing your depressing life into the commentary box? Sorry, viewers, back on with the race, and Jev James is firmly in the slipstream, in the suck zone of Morai in front, but look at the power of the Mazda just pull away on the straight. It really does seem that James's R18 is down on power and that's not good. Just gonna have to cut you off there Clive as James goes for a move up the inside of the Japanese driver going into this fast section. Oh nearly contact did you see that Clive? Unbelievable driving there to avoid any contact whatsoever but he's made the move stick and James is up to 11th position on the first lap. Very, very good driving. What do you think of that move, Clive? I think it was absolutely executed to perfection. Didn't have the power on the uphill climb, but managed to take the apex better than the Japanese driver. Really, really good. I'm impressed with the reactions as well of when Morai just caught across him there. Reactions like a cat. Reactions like my snowflake ad. Oh, would you shut up about your pissing cat for once, Clive? It's dead. You need to get over it. But what is not dead is Jeb James's chances of a podium finish as he is cutting through the pack like a hot knife through butter. Setting purple sectors, he is only moving forward as he is catching the British driver pits in front of him. A good couple of corners here will see him pass as the other drivers are not as fast as him. Hitting the apex nicely. Can he get the cutback on pits? He's gone for the move. Still on the inside. He must give him space. And they are side by side coming up the back straight. This is going to be a drag race up to this heavily cambered hairpin corner. Pits up on the inside then. How is this going to play out? Pitts takes it nice and easy, James not really putting up a fight at all as they climb up the hill through these sweeping left, right hand corners. You see that power of Pitts's car just pull away from James there as we come into this corner, heavy on the brakes, James really closes up, goes for a move, there may have been contact but he's not going to care about that as James moves up into 10th place. Once again, Roger, an absolutely fantastic move by James. Fantastic, using that momentum of the car just to squeeze Pitts out to the outside of the track. Oh my god, Clive, he's going for another move into turn one on the Japanese player, and he's made it stick. Absolutely fantastic driving later on the brakes, darting to the inside of the corner, sees him move up to ninth place. And surely not, he's going around the outside of the Swedish driver there. Unbelievable, we are witnessing an absolutely world-class 
drive from the young British driver here. I just don't believe what I'm seeing, Roger. This is an absolutely tremendous drive by the Englishman as he's going past another player in around the outside again. It seems to be his favourite move. The other drivers just don't expect it whatsoever and he's really using that mechanical grip of the Audi R18 to his advantage. But unfortunately Clive, that straight line speed of his Audi R18 really is putting him at a disadvantage. A better run out of that corner makes him sweetly drive past McCoy there and now he must go a little bit defensive but I think the move is done. Another purple sector there. As he is the fastest man on the track and now hunting down the German driver Pabst in front of him. Clive, how far do you think James is going to be able to climb in this race? I think he could, uh, he could go pretty high. Uh, I don't know if he can get that top spot. He is 16 seconds down on the lead. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Roger. He's going to have to really, really fight, like he is with the German and the Italian right now. And boy, was that an aggressive T1 as he muscles his way past the German and around the outside. We were just talking about that, Clive. His favourite move around the outside, wasn't expecting it, but Pepe comes back at him down the straight with the more power in his Audi R18, surely not around the outside, no lack of grip, little bit of understeer sends James off, luckily he didn't get caught up on the grass, otherwise that could have spelt absolute destruction for his chances of a podium finish. And we have seen it before, Roger, that when players are the fastest driver on the track, that they tend to overdrive themselves, going into corners a little bit fast, a little bit too hot, a little bit too aggressive. As, uh, oh my god, Roger! I know, Clive! Pepe, absolutely brutal, really sends it up the inside of James there. Aggression on Max, it seems. James is not going to lie down and just take that. Pepe is in for it here as he looks up the inside. A little bit of contact there, really rubbing is racing. And that is it. The move is done. Pepe getting a little bit of his own medicine. And boy, does it taste bitter, Mr. Italian. So, five seconds to the car in front. The Brazilian Ruiz gives us a little bit of a chance to reflect on the race and for James to get his head down and put in some good lap time. So, Clive, what are your thoughts at the halfway point in this race? What do you think? What's been a standout moment for you so far? Well, Roger, I've really enjoyed the race so far. James has driven with his elbows out the whole way, not caring for the cars at all. And you don't really see that in racing these days. Race cars are worth so much money that that really takes effect on how aggressive drivers can drive in the race. But I've really enjoyed it so far. Hopefully the second half of the race can give us even more excitement. And to be honest, Roger, I really, really needed this race. As you know, I've had a really tough morning, you know, with with Snowflake and, you know, the death, the, the death of the cat and, and that, you know. Once again, Clive, stop bringing up your dead cat. Nobody wants to hear about it. We can talk about it in the pub after, but right now we are back on board with James as he rounds out the end of lap 5. Purple sectors once again. And what an absolutely fantastic lap he really has as he is all over the Brazilian here. Just going to be patient. He knows that he's faster and that he can get a better run out of this final corner around the outside then. 
nearly running onto the grass on the outside of the corner but made it stick on the black stuff will ruiz have a comeback down at the start finish straight later on the brakes around the outside james goes up into fourth place a good battle with the brazilian there nice and clean what do you think to that move there clive well once again i'm gonna sing his praises really aggressive move around the outside not really seen much at all but when he's judging the other players and sort of seeing where they're fast where they're slow he can then attack the space that is given. Wow, Clive, it actually sounds like you know what you're talking about. Very, very impressive. I would expect it, though, from you, as we have been commentating together since 1981. Do you remember that race, Clive? I do indeed, Roger. It was a lovely summer's day. It was a Sunday, it was raining, it was absolutely beautiful at Alton Park. What a lovely day we had and what a relationship it started, Roger. 2019 now and we are still going strong as the day we first met, Roger. Indeed, Clive, it has been an absolute pleasure commentating with you over the years when you're not talking about your depressive life or your dead cats. Yes viewers, there has been more than poor old Snowflake. But let's not talk about Clive's depressing life, let's talk about the race. Now closing in on Leonardi the Italian in front, James, looks up the inside, he's gone for the move, he's made it stick, is Leonardi going to come back into the right-hander? No, he's not, but James has gone a little bit deep, but there we go, up into third, that podium position, and my word, has James worked hard for it, Clive? Yes, uh, Roger, yes indeed, he didn't have the best qualifying session, obviously starting in 12th position, out of 20 cars but he's worked really really hard on climbing up the field and just look at it just look at him go his hard work is paying off as he now has a lap and a half to catch the Finnish player and the Belgique in first and second Lark Sonnen and Dubois then the two drivers in front of James and the only two players who can stop him from getting that pole position at the end of the race. Coming into this hairpin then, really difficult corner Clive, as visibility is at a premium in this Audi R18. What do you think to the visibility in this car? Well, I wouldn't like to drive it really. It's, it, you can't really see, and I'm only five foot four, so I don't even think I'll be able to see over the steering wheel. Yes, you are a little bit vertically challenged, my friend, as James comes around the final quarter then to complete the penultimate lap, four seconds adrift from the Finnish player in first. As he runs a little bit wide there, luckily he regains himself using that little bit of tarmac runoff. Not having the best lap there, 1.6 seconds down on his fastest lap time as he's going oh he's pushing too hard we were talking about this earlier Clive and it does seem that James is just pushing that little bit too hard he knows he's faster than these cars and he just needs to drive at his own ability as he goes wide once again his head has gone Clive yes Roger I think we've started to see some signs of choking a really good race but he is ruining it now by little mistakes. Oh, look at this fucking bottle job. Clive, you cannot swear on national television. Sorry, viewers. A big bash in the back from Leonardi, though, as this race has gone from a possible first or second place for James to a battle for third. Ruiz now passing Leonardi. Is he going to have some say in the matter as we come into this final section 
of turns. Who to use a fucking bottle to a boat? Clive, no wonder your cat killed himself by running in front of that milk cart this morning. Absolute potty mouth. Ruiz up the inside, and now they climb up this left hander. Then to the right hander. What is James going to do? He has to make a move, Clive. He has to make a move. Up the inside he goes. No, he doesn't. For the second corner, there he goes. Up the inside into that podium position. What an ending to this race. All he has to do now is to hold on. Ruiz looking up the inside. No, he's not going to go for the move. Jeff James touches the grass, stays on though, and he's going to ride this car home for a third position. Wow, what a ending and what a race, Clive. Wow, what an absolutely mesmerizing finish to that race. Hats off to all the drivers, but for James going from 12th to 3rd, fantastic drive. What a first round race then. The next race will be held in Tokyo, Clive, and I can't wait to be there with you once more. So that is going to be it from us. I've been Roger Blackwater, and sitting beside me has been Clive Smith. Say goodbye, Clive. Uh, goodbye. And we will see you in the next round.